Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we are talking about the conjunctions. What is a conjunction? A conjunction is the name for those common words that are used to join, conjoin parts of sentences. Also, conjunctions may be used to begin certain sentences. All of these words and many more are, are conjunctions. For, than, before, if, or, while, wherever, even though, whether, and, nor, and many, many, many more. Now, let's look at the coordinating conjunctions. Well, these conjunctions are seven very common words. They are very small, made up of three or fewer letters. By the way, you can call them the fanboys. When you use each coordinating conjunctions, again, when to use each coordinating conjunctions. Well, to communicate addition, we usually use and. To communicate contrast, use but or or. To communicate a result effect, use so. To communicate a reason and cause, use for. To communicate a choice, use or. To communicate a negative choice, use no. Use them between two independent clauses. And as you know, an independent clause is a clause that makes sense by itself and it can stand alone because it has a subject, a verb, and it makes a complete idea. Coordinate conjunctions. They are used to join words, phrases, and independent clauses. Have a look at these examples, please. He only wears striped ties and polka dotted bow ties. Your and joins two words, ties and bow. The shoes were not blue suit nor black leather. Nor joins two phrases. Example number three. It wasn't a costume party, yet many came dressed as literary villains. Yet joins two independent clauses. More coordinating conjunctions are likely used less often. However, they serve an important function. When to use each coordinating conjunctions. For the reason to communicate additional information, you can use consequently, furthermore, however, indeed, moreover, nevertheless, then, and therefore. Use them between two independent clauses. Coordinate conjunctions are used to join independent clauses. Let's take some examples. Example one. He only wears brown wingtips. Consequently, he does not wear white socks. If you notice and have a very deep look, you will find out that consequently joins two independent clauses. The first clause is, he only wears brown wing tips. And the second one is, he doesn't wear white socks. Two independent clauses, each one of them makes sense by its own. Example two, the shoes were not sued. However, they were leather. However, here joins two independent clauses. First close and the second close. Example three. It wasn't a Halloween party. Nevertheless, many came dressed in costumes. Nevertheless, joins two independent clauses. Now let's move to subordinate conjunctions. These conjunctions are used to express relationships between dependent and independent clause. When to use common subordinate conjunctions? 
Well, regarding time, you can easily use after, before, once, since, until, when, whenever, while. To communicate a reason and cause, you can use as, because, and since. To communicate result, effect, in order that, so, so that, and that. To communicate a condition, if, even, and unless. To communicate contrast, you can simply use although, even though, though, and where is. Regarding location, you can use where and wherever. Regarding a choice, use that. Subordinate conjunctions often begin a dependent clause. If the dependent clause begins or interrupts the sentence, then it is separated from the independent clause by a comma. Let's see. Examples of subordinate conjunctions in sentences. Example 1. Once she found the perfect brooch, she purchased three outfits to match it. Once here demonstrates a time context. A comma is used because the conjunction begins the sentence, which turns this sentence into a dependent clause, because if you set this clause all by itself, it would never make a complete idea. You cannot say, once she found the perfect brooch and you stop, you have to complete it. So, if you start your sentence using a dependent clause, please make sure you set these two clauses off using a comma. Number two, he wore the top hat wherever he went. Wherever demonstrates a location context. Though wherever begins the dependent clause, no comma is used because it doesn't begin the sentence or interrupt the sentence. So for further explanation, if you look in the if you look at the first sentence, you will find out that it is an independent clause that makes sense by itself. He wore the top hat. And the second sentence is wherever he went, which is an independent clause. In this case, if you start with the depend with the with the independent clause, then you don't have to use a comma in between these two sentences. Correlative conjunctions. Correlative conjunctions are two separate conjunctions that are often in sentences together. These words are very good examples of correlative conjunctions. Both and, either or, neither nor, not only, but also, whether or, not so much as. Let's take some examples. Both maroon and gray accent nicely. I like to wear either pants or capris. Neither the shirt nor the jacket fit. Not only one button fell off, but all of them. Whether or not you wear nice clothes, you, wear, you have to wear clothes. It was not that his clothes were flamboyant so much as they were florid. Now let's move to conjunctive adverbs. Conjunctive adverbs provide connections and transitions that clarify or limit the meaning of words. Let's see when to use common conjunctive adverbs. To communicate addition, use also furthermore or besides. To communicate contrast, use however, still, nevertheless, instead or otherwise. To communicate comparison, you can use similarly or likewise. To introduce a result, summary, use therefore, thus, consequently, accordingly, hence or then. To indicate time, you can use next, then, meanwhile, or finally. And to communicate emphasis, you can easily use indeed or certainly.
Well, conjunctive adverbs can appear anywhere in a sentence. They should be followed by a comma and one in the middle of the sentence preceded by a semicolon. Examples? Furthermore, stiletto heels are not a fad. They are classic. Furthermore, communicates an additional statement and is followed by a comma. Example two, his crimson cape caught on the skyscraper. Therefore, his flying ended abruptly. Therefore, communicates a result and is preceded by a semicolon because it is in the middle of the sentence. Now it's time for a parting quiz. Finally, the University Writing Center staff and I hope that the presentation has helped you develop a better understanding of conjunctions since they are vital to the English language. Consequently, you will use them often in your writing endeavors. Perhaps this online lecture has not helped with your grammar so much as, the, as with enhancing your fashion awareness. Therefore, challenge yourself to a conjunction quiz or call it a review before signing off. Review is preferable because the word quiz often has a negative connotation. Whether or not you feel like a conjunction pro, scan this paragraph and see if you can recognize the conjunctions, correlative conjunctions and conjunctions. After you're done, click the next slide where you will find the answers. Okay? Now, let's move to the answers. But be careful, we have some short forms. CC stands for correlative conjunction, SC, subordinate conjunction, CA, conjunctive adverb, and CC2, which is correlative conjunction. All right? Then you will find out that finally is a conjunctive adverb and is a CC since is an SC, which stands for, very good, subordinate conjunction. Consequently, CA, correlative ad conjunction, and not correlative conjunction. So much as correlative conjunction before Subordinate conjunction, because subordinate conjunction, whether or coordinate conjunction, if subordinate conjunction, after subordinate conjunction, and where subordinate conjunction. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed my presentation today. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And wait for other videos to come. Stay tuned.